Corace Crude Increment Program is the largest oil increment development to be undertaken not only in the history of Saudi Aramco, but in the oil industry to date. This is part of Saudi Aramco's established plan to increase crude supply due to the increasing energy consumption in the world. Corace Crude Increment Program will provide 1.2 million barrels per calendar day of stabilized Arabian light crude blend from Corace Abu Jafan and Mazlij fields, which is sent directly to customers through the East-West Pipeline. Corace field was discovered in 1957 and began production in 1963, while Abu Jafan and Mazlij fields were discovered in 1972 and were brought on stream in 1982. Corace Field is the biggest of the three fields with an area of 2,890 square kilometers. It is located approximately 250 kilometers southwest of Dharan. Abu Jafan Field is an area of 520 square kilometers and is located southwest of the Corace Field. Mazalish Field has an area of 1,630 square kilometers and is located southeast of the Abu Jafan Field. Around 231 oil production wells will be drilled to meet the production of 1.2 million barrels of oil per calendar day, connected by 8 and 10 inch flow lines above and below ground. These flow lines will be connected to 14 trunk lines to deliver the wet crude oil from the fields to the Corey Central Processing Facilities that will be received by each of the 4 by 25 percent manifold headers. The stabilized crude will be pumped to the product pipeline or storage. In each train, crude will be fed into a high-pressure production trap where the oil, water and gas fractions are separated. The separated oil will then flow to the low-pressure production trap which will operate at atmospheric pressure and be further degassed. The degassed crude oil from the low-pressure production trap will be sent to the wet-dry crude heat exchanger and heated using the heat from the hot stabilized product crude. Then the degassed crude will be sent to the dehydration train consisting of electrostatic dehydrator desalter to remove the water and salt. Desalted crude oil will then be sent to the crude stabilizer to remove hydrogen sulfide and other light hydrocarbons. Stabilized crude will be sent directly to the common suction header of 4 by 50 percent crude shipper pumps by a 48 inch by 3.5 kilometer pipeline then to the east-west crude pipeline. When the east-west crude pipeline batches Arabian super light crude, oil storage facilities will be available to provide the flexibility of routing a whole day's production through 3 by 50 percent oil storage tanks. The gas from the low-pressure production trap and the crude stabilizer column will be compressed in the low-pressure compressor before being mixed with gas from the high-pressure production trap and entering the first stage of the high-pressure compressor. The discharge from the high-pressure compressor's first stage will enter the second stage of the high-pressure compressor before being routed to the gas processing facilities. The gas processing facilities will comprise 2 by 75 percent gas trains that will provide gas dehydration and dew point control for the gas from the four gas oil separation plant trains. The gas from the gas oil separation plant trains will be cooled and dehydrated to a water dew point of 45 degrees Fahrenheit in the TEG contactor. Product streams will be 315 million standard cubic feet per day of sour gas, which will be exported by a 38 inch by 142 kilometer sour gas pipeline to the Shed Gum gas plant. Hydrocarbon liquids will be collected in the condensate feed separators and fed to the NGL stabilizer where methane, hydrogen sulfide and most of the ethane will be removed. The 
The stabilized 70 million barrels per calendar day of NGL will be routed by a 16 inch by 3.5 kilometer pipeline to the Shedgum Yanbu NGL pipeline. The Corey Central Processing Facilities will have low pressure, high pressure and common flare systems to release gas during any relief scenarios. Additionally, two cryogenic burn pits are provided to handle flaring of any hydrocarbon liquids. The water from the water oil separator will be disposed of through a segregated injection header to the Corey field. This water is not sufficient to maintain pressure in the reservoir while the crude is being withdrawn from the field. A major expansion at Gorea Seawater Treatment Plant, undertaking to increase seawater injection capacity by 4.5 million barrels per calendar day, of which 2.14 million barrels per calendar day will be injected into Corace Fields and 1.9 million barrels per calendar day in Gowara Field. The Southern Area Seawater Capacity Expansion Objective is to design and construct safe and reliable facilities to produce 1.2 million barrels per day of Arabian light crude from the Kuras area and expand water injection facilities by 4.5 million barrels per day to support production of Kuras and Gowar fields and to achieve best in class in terms of quality, cost and schedule. The seawater expansion project will provide seawater supply and injection facilities to maintain pressure in reservoirs while crude oil is being produced. Water injection is one of several measures taken to maximize reservoir recovery and therefore supports the corporate objective of managing and protecting the kingdom's resources. This project will support the treatment, supply, distribution and injection of seawater during phase one of the proposed co-race area development and go or field production enhancement. Urea seawater treatment plant expansion will include new equipment in the intake system, nine treatment modules with a capacity of half a million barrels per day, and four shipping pumps with their control stations. A total of 4.5 million barrels per day will be transported to Kores and Garwar fields through new pipelines, Quad 2 and QUU4, while the electrical and process control system of the existing plant will be upgraded. Plant utilities including the poly, coagulant, hypochlorite generation units, plant air, raw water, potable water, nitrogen gas, and sulfur plants will be upgraded and or extended to support the new facilities. Moreover, the new administration building will be constructed adjacent to the Arabian Gulf. This building will be parallel to many other expansions inside the plant. Seawater will be drawn into the intake structure from the seawater intake channel through 65 pipes, each with a diameter of 48 inches, dosed with hypochlorite and passed through two existing plus one new set of bar and drum screens. The bar and drum screens remove trash and debris as small as 0.2 centimeters in diameter. Water will pass through vertical lift pumps that have a capacity of 2.4 million barrels per day each and then water is lifted through 54-inch discharge lines to the above-grade canal. The above-grade canal that acts as a reservoir will be extended during this project to its full design length. Excess seawater in the above-grade canal will overflow to the intake through overflow flume pipes. Each of the nine new treatment modules will have feed pumps that draw seawater from the above-grade canal and send it to four high-flow sand filters. Polyelectrolyte and coagulant are injected prior to the filters to enhance the filtration process while the hypochlorite is injected to kill the marine growth in the system. Treated water that has tight specifications, for example, total suspended solids of less than 0.2, is then sent to the deaerators where the dissolved oxygen is removed by injection of both nitrogen gas and sulfurous acid. Water with less than 10 parts per billion of the dissolved oxygen 
is sent to the discharge headers through the column bottom pumps. Biocide chemicals are injected at this stage to control the bacterial growth in the system. After that, water passes through the shipping pumps and the control stations to the water transmission pipeline. The Uthmaniya Water Supply Station is the cornerstone of all the southern area water injection facilities. A major part of this plant upgrade is to install a new combustion gas turbine with pump to boost the water pressure and deliver it to the Hawaii Water Injection Plant. Moreover, the upgrade will include a new DCS system, air instrument system, new control room, 480 volt substation and fuel gas pipeline. 2.36 million barrels per day of treated seawater is transported from the Gurea Seawater Treatment Plant to the Uthmaniya Water Supply Station via the 60-inch QUU-4 pipeline. The Uthmaniya Water Supply Station will deliver 4.51 million barrels per day to the Hawaii Water Injection Plant. Hawaii Water Injection Plant services two areas, namely Hawaii and Harad. While it injects water in the Hawaii area, it boosts the pressure in the Harad area. To inject 2.52 million barrels per day in the Hawaii field, this project will install an additional pump train with a capacity of 12,000 gallons per minute. Upgrading the DCS system, install a new air system, and upgrade various existing booster pump components. The Hawaii water injection plant will also pressurize 1.99 million barrels per day from 260 to 680 PSIG in order to transport the treated water to the Harad plant. The Harad water injection facilities within the Harad GASP will handle the pressurized 1.99 million barrels coming from the Hawaii water injection plant, then injected into the field using two new seawater injection pump trains with a capacity of 12,000 gallons per minute each. destination of treated seawater is to be injected in the ground with a pressure of 2500 PSIG. The Andar water injection plant will undergo a major upgrade to support the new increment of water injection, such as a new control room, electrical substation, maintenance facility, new security gatehouse, fuel gas pipeline, instrument air compressor, and a new evaporation pond. The new plant configuration on the north side will support Gawar fuel production, 
by installing a 19,500 gallon per minute combustion gas turbine driven pump train. Butter injection plant will house a 13.8 kV substation, process interface building, instrument air system, fire water system, and team building and water injection facility. To achieve 2850 PSIG for the 2.14 million barrels per day of treated seawater coming from the Andar water injection plant, the Curace water injection plant will utilize five turbine-driven injection pumps, each delivering a total of 12,500 gallons per minute to both Curace and Abu Jafan fields. The Abu Jafan substation is located 70 kilometers southwest of the Kores water injection plant. This substation will provide the power for the oil well's electrical submersible pumps, cathodic protection and other uses in the Abu Jafan area. The final destination of treated seawater is to be injected in the ground with a pressure of 2500 PSIG. 2.14 million barrels per day will be injected in this field at this phase of development. The construction of the Corace Residential and Industrial Complex will support the development of the fields and will consist of the following facilities for 1,200 people. seven Saudi Aramco residential buildings, a community center, outdoor and indoor recreation facilities, a musala, an administration building, a residential workshop and warehouse, and airstrip facilities, as well as infrastructure roads to the highways connecting the facilities. Corace Crude Increment Program will provide 1.2 million barrels per calendar day of stabilized Arabian light crude blend from Corace, Abu Jafan and Mazalish fields. Saudi Aramco's team vision is to bring a world-class facility into production, meeting applicable environmental standards and to be recognized as best-in-class for quality, design, safety and reliability.